Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. Look at us. From January, this is the last Sunday of this month. You've kept us. It's not our wisdom. It's not our strength. It's you, the one that watches over Israel, that neither slumbers. It's your grace. It's your grace. It's your grace. We give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, wow. Let's shout a big hallelujah. We're going to hear some powerful testimonies. All the testifiers have just two minutes to round the testimonies up. We're going to re welcome Sister Adiola. Adiola, welcome for your testimony. Go ahead. Yeah. Adiola is going to share a testimony. She's really blessed us with this testimony all through the services. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Adiola. Yes, go ahead and share us your inspiring testimony. Praise God, church. Hallelujah. Um, sometimes last year, March, um, I was sick and I went to the... Um, at first, I was waiting for my period. And for two days, it came, but it didn't... It didn't go on just like that. So I just thought like due to stress, maybe it was just a normal thing. So I had to wait patiently to look at it. Maybe it would come out again. But any match, it did. But this time around, it was going on and on and on. So in um, May, I had to like, okay, go for a scan. But I didn't tell anyone at home that I was going for a scan. So when I did, I was told that I had fibroid and endometriosis. And, you know... Andrometrosis was just the thing that I had to Google to know what endometriosis. So when you had this condition since March, um, how long did your period come for? You know, yeah. Um, my period was, it was going on and on. It didn't. So stop. hold on, from March you were seeing blood every day. Yes. Every day. Every day. You were, you were bleeding every day. Very, very, very heavy. Like very heavily. Very how many heavy. menstrual pads do you use in the day? I use eight. And it got to a stage I had to, like, since I stayed with my grandma, and she was like, okay, the local where we do it. She used eight menstrual pad, and it couldn't contain. So you had to use in what? So uh, my grandma had to tell me, like, I should be using, um, we had to cut a clean sheet, like a um, wrapper, and I should make use of it with the sanitary towel. But it wasn't holding the blood at all. It wasn't working at all. And it got to say, like, I couldn't go out. I couldn't do anything. I was just, like, when they say someone is stagnant, I was just home. Not when you anything. sleep overnight, does your bed get soaked? It does. Everything gets soaked. It got to a stage that I had to double my duvet, my bed sheets, use extra because... And next this went day, on for six months, sh losing blood every day. How about the blood clot? Was it, like, tiny blood? Or? It wasn't tiny. It was as huge as the size of a potato. That's so sometimes it will have a blood clot that will come out as huge as the size of a potato. Yes. So the doctors, these are the doctor's report where they say that you had endometriosis, they did scan and all of those kind of things. I can see the scan test yes. here. I can see the scan test here. This, was, this is really horrible. Well, how did your boyfriend, did you have a boyfriend at that time? Well, my relationship ended because he couldn't, you know, take it. So he had to break up. He had to, oh, presently wow. right now, he's even married. So he had to break up. So, well, <laughs> let's just forget about that because I don't want to be emotional. <laughs> you don't want to get emotional about that. But, so, but, 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 but uh, awesome. So, what did God do? So, you were, so, so someone invited you to NLP? So, yeah, my auntie, she's actually one big person of NLP. She started NLP 2021. So, last year, when she noticed about this, and I went to see gynecologist and I was told that I need to come for a surgery, but I have phobia for surgery. I didn't go for it. So she now said, like, join me with this prayer. Like, let's join our faith. And we both started with the prayers as well. So when it got to the stage, she was like, um, okay, Pastor Bullock, because I was even having seizures because I had seizures since when I was 18 and I was nursing it. So most of the time, Pastor Bullock would say, um, if you have seizure right now, you've received your healing, I key into it, I'll say amen. And it talks about fibroid, you mentioned fibroid cases, I key into it, I'll say amen. Then, 
there was a day that I, I had the testimony of a lady. She, she was bleeding for three months or six months. And I was like, God, what is going on? Like, I didn't get my own testimony. Is it like I'm doing something very wrong? Like, what is going on? Let's jump to September, like you said before. So September, you got involved in it. You, you were discouraged. You stopped for a while. Yes. So September, you joined the fasting and praying. Yes. My yeah. auntie had to introduce me to the fasting and prayer. And I did it. So because of my drugs I was using, because my drugs, I couldn't go out of the house because it was very bad. And because of the drugs I was using, I was even having a side effect that I can't walk from here to there. My heart, um, I always have heart palpitations. Palpitations. So I, I had to sit down at home. I didn't do anything. So when I did the fasting and prayer, I just came in my face. I was just like, okay, let me just do it and let me just believe in God. So what it, happened after the fasting? This so was in October. We found September, October. Yeah, that um, in October. So I had to sleep and just a normal day. I had to pack my bed just the way I usually do. And the next thing, I woke up early in the morning just to check myself, and I noticed like the blood was just little. So when it was like that, I was like, okay, hey. don't let me to just be in a rush. Like I just don't want to be an alarmist to start telling my family like it seems i'm ill so i had to just check on it for like three days and the third day it was actually completely dried up so, so um, hold on she has been bleeding since march october the blood dried up not october this year october last year she took one all year to check She's back here to say everything has been regularized. Look at the medical report. So you went to the hospital again? Yes, I went. I met with a friend of mine this year. So I told him about what I've been passing through. So he said, like, okay, he believes that there's a miracle. But I should still go for a checkup. So I went to meet a doctor. And they, I met with two gynecologists as well. And they requested I should do a scan. And this was the scan I did. And in the scan result shows that I have no fibroid and no hey! 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 Someone say what a mighty God we serve. And and also since this is a scan that said she had fibroid double scan. This is a scan that said the fibroid is gone. The endometriosis is gone. The seizures. The seizures. I haven't even had the seizures at all. So I thank God. Praise thank God. God. Hallelujah. So I say, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Sister Janet, please come. Amen. One minute, Sister Janet. Yes. Good morning. Um, I don't know where to start from, but um, last year my sister introduced me to my sisters. I've not heard about my sisters before. And so I came, I was sitting somewhere there. And the message that came from the pulpit was so strong that I was like, how come I not discover this church for a very long time? So I went back home, and then she told me that there's going to be a relationship and marriage series would you like to attend i said okay let me come so the first service she said she attends just first service i said okay let me go so when i came for first service i was behind i was sitting back back there then i told her don't worry i'll wait for second service i move forward a bit i said don't worry i'll wait for third service i moved for another for that. i said don't worry fourth service I, I, I now sat somewhere here and then that day pastor Bolaji was talking about baggages he had like four baggages here. And he was just hammering on. It was as if Pastor Bolaji brought me out and like, yeah, lie down. Pah, lie down. <laughs> so I felt it so much because before then, my relationship had been up and down. I only trust my family members. I don't care who you are, I don't trust you. If you like, tell me fine gay. You are and you're the love of my life. Mm. I never trusted anybody. And this has affected my relationship so bad that I, I can't even, no matter how you treat me nice, I will just tell you, forget that, I know my thing, I know my thing. So that day I got back home because I was just, my relationship had already gone. So that day I took my phone, I started writing episode, episode one, episode two, episode three, episode, I wrote, in fact, when I sent it to him, he was like, ah, are you okay? Are you all right? Is everything, are you fine? Are you sick? I said, no, I'm not. I'm just, I just want to apologize 
for the way I've been treating you, for for not being myself. Like I had because of my relation, my first relationship, I had I had to bleed on every man that had come my way. And I am 38 to and be booming like this. Hi. So <laughs> after I sent that message, that message changed my life, guys. <laughs> She's married, she's married, she's married, she's married, she is married, she's married, she is married, she is married, she is married. Someone say what a mighty God we serve. advanced class I have to call so we are believing God for something seeing goods just you know <laughs> praise God Hallelujah. this is a power of right teaching we didn't even pray just the teaching change our mind change our mindset look at her today married to the glory of God God bless you God bless you God bless you hallelujah for the final testimony today, we're going to invite Spyro. Spyro, look backwards. They have a picture for you. <laughs> Spyro, look backwards. You look so full of poverty. Praise God. What are you here to testify about? So... I've come with my team to testify to the glory of God. Um, so this is to tell you that the teachings and everything you hear on this altar works. You know, so when I was going to America for these awards, I told a friend of mine, he said, ah, ah, they've nominated you for three awards. Are you sure you are going to get anyone? I said, ah, ah. I even created a shelf for awards in my house without awards. Because faith works and the teachings so when I got there, they called the first one. It was in spiral. They called the second one. The third one, I was shaking. He messaged me from Nigeria. I was like, ha, ah, shit, we not go get this thing like this. <laughs> what did you say? I said, I said, don't worry, we're getting the last one. <laughs> All right, so um, I remember what Pastor B will say, that even if it's the last minute, God will show up and show off. And I, as I was there shaking, I heard for the best collaboration, spiral. And I got... And I got this. And then Afrima came also. I got Afrima. And then I came back home. I got this. And I'm still nominated for several awards. And I'm just here to return all the glory to God. Because remember the first time I came here to testify. This is the guy that literally would give me 2,000 era, 5,000 era, 15,000 era just to exist and to live. You bought someone a house. What did you buy the house for? <laughs> Look at the house. So we are here to we are here to give God the glory and give God the thanks. Me, I know the package, I know the form. I just want to return all the glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's what a mighty God we serve. Fiber disappear, seizure stop, endometriosis cease, marital breakthrough. Now we have awards. Ah, ah, the God is walking in here. Oh. That's why I'm saying to someone, huh, the year is not rounding up. It is picking up. By the time we are doing end of the year service, the testimony line will contain you, your siblings, in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say grace, say grace, say grace, say this is my story. Praise God. Oh, wow. Such powerful testimonies. 
to God be the glory to God be the glory amen amen let's get into the word of the Lord today let's get into the word of the Lord today let's get into the word of the Lord. oh wow and please I want to encourage you if you have a testimony maybe from church from NLP always is it please you can send a message to send us a message we'd love you to share in church because look at how all of this beautiful testimony today has raised our faith the lady said I was 38 and I was still doing myself until a teaching came and all this teaching you hear, go back, watch it online. Go back, watch it online. It will change your life. It will change your life. And make sure you find a way to invite your friends to church. Make sure you find a way. I'm always finding a way to invite someone to church. Every Sunday, up to yesterday, I still invited someone to church. You know, if I've, one of my invitees is over there, is right there. I invited him to church. You know, always find a way to invite someone to church every Sunday. Because you don't know, if she didn't come to church, maybe by now she'll still be single almost 40 and she'll be praying not knowing that it's a teaching that will change her life hallelujah and i mean if you if you missed last week's teaching from pastor mo you missed pastor john oh my god those teachings were fire go back on youtube watch it when it blesses you share it to your family members your friends say this teaching blessed me you know the way youtube has even done it you can even do time stamp time stamp means you can cut out the time and say between this and this really touched me amen and after the service today we bless you write something you know someone a woman sent me a message today she said i've been married for 47 years she's not 47 she said i've been married for 47 years and i'm a married counselor what i've learned during this marriage series has been life-changing for me i'm telling you this is life-changing this is just the wisdom of god that god is moving to us let's turn our bibles to act i'm um, sorry genesis chapter 2 verse 25 and i want to talk about how to deal with neglect in marriage or maybe in another way how to improve communication in marriage act chapter 2 in verse 25 so all couples remember november 5th we will gather here and this week is our fasting and prayer in nlp praise the lord this week is november the first the second and the third you've heard the testimonies we are saying as a church we are not rounding up the year is what picking up so if you believe that join me November the 1st, the 2nd, and 3rd. Help me send it to all your friends to join us as we fast and pray. All right, let's get into the word of God. Let's get into the word of God quickly. Oh, glory to God. This is very powerful today. So fasting and prayer is going to be very, very, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. No, it's going to be November the 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd. All right. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 25, remember that this is where they had made a big mistake then god says the most amazing thing he says and both of them were naked and what the man and his wife and they were not ashamed it, it's very challenging it's very challenging this is when if had done something and passed it on to adam and instead of them to ruin each other the Bible says both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. And let me say something to you, everyone here. Either you are single or you're married. Everyone wants a relationship where you can be naked and you don't have to be ashamed. I don't know about you. Do you know sometimes you meet someone and you have to put on your best English? Have you been there before? Then you they say, and what's your name? My name is John you have to change your tone because you understand that if you don't come across that way they may not accept you sometimes have you you know have you gone to see some people before and they have to use makeup to see you in those relationships they are not themselves there must be some addition there must be some subtraction but you know some about those relationships those are not the relationship you want to be for a long time you want to be there and go because it's not who you are and I'm saying so because one of the things single people ask me is that, how do you, what do you look out for? I say you need to date someone you can be yourself with. You need to date someone that can be yourself with. I mean, you are improving and you have work areas, but you need to be with someone you can be yourself with. The Bible says they were naked and they were not ashamed. You need someone that when there's money, we can go out, eat, watch movies, do all those things. But when there's no money, we can come back home and say, what are you having? Is Gary and Sugar? Do you want some? 
and the man say, oh, I have let me go and buy ground not and make it nice. That's what it means to be naked and not ashamed. Not people that in their great season, it's very, very good, but in the down season, they are not there. You need to learn. He says, they were naked and they were not ashamed. And everyone, everyone wants, and let me tell you the truth, everyone wants a relationship where you can be this way. I said it this way in the other service. I said, there's a strength that comes from someone loving you unconditionally. There's a kind of strength. You, you, let, me t- let me take you what I mean. Have you been in hospital before and you refuse to use your drugs because maybe you're tired, you're really sick, the drugs are bitter, and you know, the doctors can't talk to you, nurse can't talk to you. All of a sudden, your mom walks there and your mom says, Amarachi, use your drugs. Then all of a sudden, you will not use it for you to get better. You will not do it for yourself. But because of the love of a mother, you'll get up and you use the drugs. Why? Because they strain from knowing that kind of love. And that's what everybody wants to experience today. That's what everyone, knowing someone loves you, gives you so much strength. Everyone wants a relationship where you can be free, where you can feel appreciated, where you can feel seen, where you can feel understood, where you can feel appreciated, where you can feel supported. That's what it means when it says they were naked and they were not ashamed. What that means is that when I have a health challenge, the health challenge is not my health challenge. There's someone to go through it with me. Sometimes you see a couple and so on and there's but there's barrenness issue and the barrenness issue breaks the relationship and the man says that's your problem woman go and get pregnant or else i'll marry somebody else you don't understand it's about being naked and no ashamed. sometimes you have a situation and let me tell you barrenness issue can never be just one person's problem it's a family problem it's both the man and the woman going through it together and sometimes it's a financial problem that the man has and the woman cannot understand that this man that was a provider is no longer able to provide at a capacity what the man needs you to know at that time is this even though i don't provide still respect and let me lead it's a relationship where i can be myself glory to god i said glory to god and so as we talk about this today as we talk about this today that's what we're building towards as a single person the kind of person you want to marry is a person that you can be naked with and you don't have to be ashamed. As a married person, the kind of marriage you want is a marriage where you can be seen, where you can be heard, where you don't have to hide. You know, the worst thing apart from the worst thing in marriage is to be in a marriage where you're hiding, where you cannot be yourself, where you cannot talk, where you cannot show yourself, where your real feelings cannot be shown because of the fear that you'll be misunderstood, you'll be misconstructed, and you are afraid in the place where you should still love, where your marriage seems like a prison to you. And as I say this today, many of you know exactly what I'm about, what I'm talking about. You've been in a relationship that seems like a cage. You've been in a marriage that seems like a cage, but that's not the way it should be. So someone says to me and says, okay, okay, but I want a great relationship. But the bad news is this. I know you want a great marriage. I know you want a great relationship. You don't get the relationship you want. You get the relationship you build. Let me say it again. You don't get the relationship you want. You don't get the marriage you want. You get the marriage you build. So when you say, I want a marriage, let me give an example of someone that wants a marriage. It's someone that wants a marriage. Oh, glory to God. Someone says, I want a marriage. Where's Peter? Is Peter there? Someone that wants a marriage. You know, Peter, come. Yeah, yeah, Peter, come. Yeah, Peter is married. He has a lovely wife. Bring a microphone with you. Glory to God. Yeah, P- Peter is there. Peter, come and tell me. Yeah. Tell me the kind of marriage you want. What's an happy home? What is family like? Your wife is jumping on you. Yes. Tell me other things that happen in the family. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Yes. Like my wife jumping on me. Yeah. And the kids. And the kids jumping on you. So that's what he wants. You know what? You don't get what you want. You know what God does for you? God says, is that what you want? God gives you raw material. And says, build your marriage. You don't get the marriage you want. You get the marriage you build. So what happens to you is that you have the raw material. Yeah. 
and you have to what build the marriage so you have all of these things and you build the marriage some of you you built it bad but you built it some of you you built it selfish but you built it the good thing is that you can also build is good so the question is this so 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 these are all the things god says you want a happy marriage god doesn't god says this is it build your marriage why you don't get the marriage you want so build something right now so as i'm preaching he'll be building something the question is this what are you building right now that's the question you know what someone is saying so I, want, I, I, want, I want a very loving marriage you don't just get what you want are you building loving marriage so i said i want a generous marriage are you building a generous marriage are you generous towards your spouse? Someone said, my husband is stingy, but the wife, are you, are you generous? Because you don't get what you want, you get what you build. So gradually, you can see this guy, he's building. I don't know what he's building, but he's building something. So the question is, with all the raw material God has given you, what kind of relationship are you building? What kind of marriage are you building? Or you're just saying that, don't worry, one day I will build something. Glory to God communication is one of the ways it's one of the raw materials that god gives us you can see that gradually he's building something thank, thank you my brother i think that's fine because i'm sitting in a nice castle right there <laughs> but do you remember i didn't give him a castle i only gave him the raw material the question is, with what god has given you what are you building with your mouth are you did you see that lady i love that lady's testimony and if you didn't watch it go back and watch the beginning of the message she said i was 38 and i was sabotaging my relationship she with her own hand was destroying the relationships you know the thing some of you need to be honest with yourself the only reason why she's married today was that she took a decision that this is me i am the problem here some of you need to be that honest and say this is me i'm the problem here the fact that you see some people that the problem play victim can i be can we talk in marriage some people that are the problem they play victim they keep saying that see what they've done to me but it's not what they've done to you it's what you've done to yourself and for there to be changed you need to take responsibility single people can i talk many of you are dating the same people with different names single book can we be honest you are dating the same person with different names you know why because the reason why i said so is this there's something wrong the way you choose you choose dysfunctional people that you keep choosing them and you say so so say, what is wrong the point is it's always your choice problem always attracts you there are people that what they have what i call the this is women they have what i call the mother teresa syndrome what's my teresa syndrome they choose men that always have problem so they are always like mother teresa hoping to save hoping to save hoping to save they open to fix open to fix in ways of fix, they will not fix and when the guy gets better they will forget you because the guy did not want to date you was looking for a fixer praise god i'll leave a fixer so you keep so wait, wait, listen to me if you're single look at your four relationships and see the pattern and find out if there's a pattern you're ignoring and the same thing can happen with the guys all the girls you date you have sex with them the first time then you date after don't you realize that the dex, that sex can sex has a way to affect the way you think so once you sleep with them bam you start dating from there i mean i have a post on doing weekends and uh let's leave it for twitter to continue tweeting <laughs> praise the lord but 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 the, but the truth is the truth And some people, when you look at your relationship, you will discover your marriage. You fight and break up relationship for the same reasons. And you keep saying, it's the other ladies. Look at yourself. It's you. Because you dated four people, all of them broke up with you for, for the same reason, but in different circumstances. They all said you were selfish, but they used different things to tell you were selfish. One said, 
It's about family. Something's about birthday. Something's about gifts. But it's the same thing you were selfish. You keep thinking it's them. Meanwhile, deep down, it's you. One of the things, one of the prayers that I want to bother you today is this. Lord, show me where to make adjustments. Because when you get better, your relationship will get better. When you get better, your marriage will get better. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So why is communication very important in marriage? Let me say this quickly. Most times, relationships and marriages don't break up because of lack of romantic love. They break up because of lack of friendship. I met with a couple not too long ago and they are divorced. But what's shocking was that they meet up time to time to have sex. I'm like, wow, since you guys like yourself and you enjoy the sex, why can't you live together? The wife said, that's the problem. If we stay more than one day together, we'll start fighting. There's still sexual chemistry, but there is no friendship. The problem is this. When we want to choose who to marry, we put sexual chemistry above friendship. So there's this nonsense that they say, we are too close to date. That nonsense is from the pit of hell. The closer you are, the more you should date. So I said, but there's no sexual chemistry. Ha. Ah. That's what you think. Give me a room. Let me lock two of you naked together and put food on Netflix there. You'll be surprised how chemistry will jump out in the next five minutes. Which is easier to build? Chemistry or friendship? Friendship. Most of you, by the time you start thinking of relationship that way, it's just single people, you will discover that the person you should date already around you. You are just not seeing them that way. And you have to begin to see them that way. Because when you date someone as your friend, you can tell there's coin coin. You can tell everything. You know what you can do, what you cannot do. You know what coin coin is? You have to check the dictionary. <laughs> Are you here? But when you don't date someone that's not your friend, you now have to be learning about them from afresh. And that's why all the troubles of early marriages happen because they didn't really know themselves until they began to date and all the time they were dating they were just being they were covering their nakedness glory to god so what does what does communication do in marriage communication boosts understanding communication boosts understanding what does it boosts understanding the more you talk the more you know your partner the more your partner knows you marriage and relationship should not be built on assumption it should be built on communication Marriage and relationships should not be built on assumption. Should be built on what communication. You know, when, you know, you know. When you're younger as a lady, the ladies always do this. He said that. What, what should I do for you? Figure it out. You will soon know that that's an immature thing to say. If there's something you want, say it. If you guys are going together anymore, that would be a nice birthday gift. That would be a nice Valentine gift. That would be a nice. Gift. Give him leave clues. Don't say. Ha -ha, can't you just figure it out? Human beings don't read mind. We see action. Every time I said to all the men have been blessed. And the reason why is that a lot of you assume they will know and they disappoint you. Don't assume. Say it clearly. So, great relationship is not built on assumption. You must say what you want. You must say what you want. You must say what you want and how you want it, when you want it, what temperature you want it. So that, because if you say that, you don't love me. Do you know that word is so wide? People don't know what love means. Some people, love means that you can wash my car. Some ladies are here. If you wash their car, they feel loved. Wow. That's amazing. Some people, don't wash my car. Give me money. I feel loved. They just responded. That there's a family in this church. The husband told me, you will not believe this. He said, Pastor, if I want to get my wife to sleep with me, if I pray one hour, he said, as I'm coming from the sweat, he said, my wife is turned on. I'm let me tell you, I kid you not. I kid you. You, you know them because they're very famous in our church. They know them. He said, nothing turns my wife on than prayer. Uh, you can be excited, but that's not you. You know, Adi. I'm only 
telling you. So when the person says, show me love, it means pray. I'm not making up stories, though. I, I wish I can call them out, but they will just feel embarrassed. <laughs> the reason why communication is because communication boosts understanding. You say you don't respect me. What does respect mean to you? Does it mean bowing down? Does it mean the tone of your voice? For example, there was a time that I told my wife, I, I complained about the way she spoke, but I could not really put my hands on needs. So I had to begin to pay attention and say, these are the things I'm talking about. Because until I can communicate, she cannot make adjustments. So a lot of you are angry about something, but you don't know what you're angry about. Glory to God. I said glory to God. When partners stop talking, their marriage and relationship start dying. When partners stop talking, their marriage and relationship start dying gradually. Because... As oxygen into the human life, that's what communication is to marriages. Glory to God. The second reason why communication is very powerful is this. Second reason why communication is very powerful is this. Communication in marriages helps to build trust. It helps to build trust. Oh, wow. Every conversation is at the level of the trust in the relationship. Let me prove it to you. If you and your mom or you and your best friend are in the car together, you guys are having a conversation. And along the road, you see someone in church that you know and you pick them into the car. What happens to the conversation? The conversation will change. You know why? The conversation will become more shallow. Not as deep as it was. Because your level of conversation will drop to your level of trust. A lot of you are wondering why your partner is not trusting. He's not talking. He's not talking because the level of the conversation is low. So you were with your partner in the car and you guys were having a nice conversation and talking about all this deep stuff. As soon as Jane entered the car, hey, hey, ah, what pastor preached on Sunday was powerful. Oh, you know, why did you move to that? You moved to a more shallow conversation. Because the conversation is going to drop to the level of trust. The problem is that you want them to talk. You put pressure for your partner to talk. You are doing the wrong thing. If you want your partner to talk, walk on the trust level. Why? The deeper the trust level, the deeper the conversation. Can we go deeper? Is that not why some of you here, you are married or dating somebody else, you are still talking to your ex? And the reason why you are talking to your ex is that although I'm with you, I trust him more. And your current partner does not understand that I thought you were married. I thought you said that he's done with you. Why are you talking to him? I'm talking to him because although we are committed, it's an assumption that because we are dating, we are best friends. It's an assumption that because we are dating, I trust you at the same level of my ex. It's an assumption. So, although we are married, although we are dating, I find myself going back to talk with him or going back to talk with her when we have real life situation because there's a level of trust and vulnerability that we, we had that I have not found here. Singles, someone like, who should I marry? Find someone that can be your safe place when you talk. Because everyone will have that person. Find that person that will be your safe place. But the challenge is this. Some of you have found someone that is your safe place. But that's the way it ends. You must also be someone's safe place. You know why? You are into a relationship. You are not a parasite. Most people have found their safe place. But they are not that person's safe place. So you eventually become what? A parasite. And all you do is to suck and suck and suck. And that person will begin to avoid you because they also are looking for someone to also be what? Their own safe place. And what makes you safe is the fact that we can trust, we can talk, we can have conversations. That's what makes you safe. We can talk. We can talk. You become my safe place. 
How do you know I'm in a safe place? Can I tell you things that I think you can use to harm me and I can trust you? One time I spoke to a couple, the wife doesn't like sex, the, wife, the husband is frustrated. I asked the wife, why don't you like sex? Within a few minutes, she broke down and crying. He said, I was raped several times. He said, doesn't just work for me because it triggers bad emotions. I said, why have you not told him this? He said, I'm just afraid. I said, you can tell me I'm not your husband, but you cannot tell him that he's your husband. And many of you here, the reason why your partner does not understand you is because there's something that will give me perspective you have not shared. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, the reason why your partner doesn't understand you is that there's something that will give him perspective that you have not shared. That if he knows that, one guy was sharing with me how his wife was very protective of his mom. And from my experience, I knew that there was something very deep there. And when I did some more investigation, I found out that when the child would go to school, the mom sold everything she had to send the child to school. And at some point became a houseless, maltreated by the family. I said, did you know this about your, your mother's wife? He said, no. I said, with this in perspective, what do you think? He said, I can now see why my wife goes the extra mile for her mom. Sometimes what causes disagreement in a relationship is that there's a perspective you don't have. So you think they're irrational. They are not irrational. There's just a perspective that you don't have. And what communication does is that it will open a window for you to see you, you, I mean, I heard, someone told the man, this man, his wife is controlling him. But what you don't know is that the liver, the kidney that man has is the wife that gave it to him. The day you know that, you understand why you think that the man is stupid. Because the man is saying, the life I have is your life. So the question is this, when someone behaves in a certain way, ask yourself, what perspective do I need to have that can make me understand why they process things and it's communication that does that glory to God I said glory to God I said glory to God the last reason why communication is powerful is this this is the last reason because in marriage there are really no marital problems so I said, no, they, we have sex problem. You don't have sex problem. We have financial problem. We have financial problem. All you have is communication problems. Because if you can talk, you can resolve your sex problem. If you can talk, you can resolve your communication problem. If you can talk, you can resolve your expectation problem. All problems are at the root of it. At the root of it, a communication problem. If you can talk and see what they are saying, you can resolve it. And that's what the Bible says in Amos 3.3. 3. It says, can two work together and say they agree? Can two more things that they agree? And some of you are here. You think, we have marital problem. Can I submit to you that you don't have a marital problem? What you have is what? A communication problem. How many can you say you don't have a relationship problem? All you have is a communication problem. You see the problem? They are not even talking right now. That's the problem. If the pastor under the anointing can say talk, refuse to talk. Let me look at him and say, you don't have a relationship problem. You don't have a marital problem. All you have is a, is a communication problem. Glory to God. Every relationship and marriage is three conversations away from a better marriage and relationship. But let me say this. I want to take this very, take this very powerfully. The most crucial conversations are never had. Even in marriage. The biggest conversation that will improve your marriage, you never talk about it. You dance around it. The most crucial conversations I never had. Who? Wow. Very true. The most crucial conversations never had. So how do I, how do I deal with neglect in my marriage? How do I become seen? How do I become sin? If you want to become sin, you need to learn to share. You need to learn to talk. 
So how do I improve my communication in marriage? We need to learn communication from a woman in the Bible. She's a bad girl in the Bible. Bad girl in the Bible. Who is this person? You know who she is? Delilah. The Bible says Delilah was so good in communication that Samson told her all that was in her heart. Give me that scripture. The Bible says Samson told her, how do you become that person in your marriage that your partner can tell you all that is in his heart, all that is in her heart? Samson, Samson the hawk of God, told Delilah, the fried young, beautiful girl, all that was in her heart. What he could not tell his best friend, he told Delilah. See what the Bible says. No, I want you to give me the part where it says he told her all that was in her heart. Yeah. The Bible says he told Delilah all that was in her heart. That means there's a, there's a, there's a wisdom to this thing. So what the Bible says, Judges chapter 16 verse 17, and Samson told her all his heart. He didn't just ask her a question. He told her all his heart. This is the goal. That you can become that person for your, in your relationship and your marriage that your partner can tell all that is there. You know, to, to be honest, as soon as I said that, someone said, oh, no, I don't want that. Yeah. But you want someone to hear all that is in your heart. Can you see your selfishness talking? How do you do this? Number one, the first step to talking is, is commit to talk. You know why I say commit to talk? Because if you're like me, I don't like to talk. Commit to talk. Commit to talk. Silence can be destructive sometimes. Sometimes fighting saves relationship and marriage. Silence breaks it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Sometimes fighting saves the relationship. Silence breaks it. Because what you keep quiet about will eventually ruin the relationship. So this, this is the kind of person I am, you know. When something happens, I, you know, I just kind of stay away. I just kind of stay away. But this is the problem with silence. You stay away, but it doesn't go away. It begins to build up and build up. And the day it happens is what? An explosion. So therefore, you don't talk, you begin to fight. You need to commit to talk and say, you know what? I've not been talking. I've not been saying how I feel. I've not been having a conversation. But it's time I begin to talk. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Then number two, how do you talk with know yourself and your communication pattern so the kind of person i have if something happens right now i have to take some time to process it so one of the things i do is that when i'm in the moment when something happens i didn't talk about it one of the things i try to do is to send a message to my wife is to tell someone something that can hold me to an extent that so that when i don't want to do it next time that conversation has been opened already some of you it's not as if you don't talk you talk too much so you talk nonsense. So when you talk, your mouth is like razor. Hey, there's nobody you cannot cut. You will cut everybody, you will give everybody their own. You distribute packages. So since you know that, you will say, How can I stop talking this way? You need to know yourself and how you talk. Why are those that are sharp? Thank God bless you that you know yourself. Those that don't know themselves are worse. Where are those that don't talk? They meditate. Good. Glory to God. So sometimes if you cannot talk, you can type. When you know yourself, then you find a solution that if I can't talk, I can what? Type. Because people that don't talk don't want to make a mistake with their words. So if you type, you can read it, read it, read it, read it, and what? Send the message. And those that must talk, what you need to do is to say, I want to talk. Just go to your phone and talk to yourself on camera. <laughs> then play back to yourself and say, mm, if I say this, have I said the right thing? <laughs> Praise Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, let your conversation be seasoned with grace. Seasoned with grace. The third thing in improving your communication is this. 
deal with the past. Sometimes what makes the current conversation very toxic is not what happened, it's what has happened. So we keep carrying the past conversation into what our current reality. One of the things you want to ask yourself is when you're talking, this is what you want to ask yourself. Are you here to talk or you're here to fight? Because the two look alike, but they're not the same. Let me show you, I'm here to fight. You have started. You have started. It was your mother last week. It was this. What? Can't I, be just, can't, can't I just be my husband's wife and be peaceful? Why was your mother come and disturb me? She just comes here anyhow. Can't you tell her something? That tone, you are here to fight. If I'm here to talk, um, I feel that my personal space is a lot invaded in. I feel disrespected and I wanted to share my feelings with you. I'm here to talk. But the reason why we're here to fight, and the reason I'm saying so, many of you think you are here to talk, meanwhile you are fighting. You want to talk, you start fighting. There's a, there's a posture of your leg. They say, you know, there's a chicken ba, chicken ba, chicken ba, chicken ba, chicken ba, chicken. Why? Some of you, is, you don't shake, but you school the English. This English will become school. You know, some people, when they get angry, their English will become very smooth. No, you can't tell me that. No, I won't take it at all. The, the British accent will come out strong. You, the reason why is that you can tell that posture is not a posture of conversation. That's a posture of fighting. Glory to God. The next thing I will say is this. When you want to talk, watch the timing. You can't want to talk when your partner is in a hurry. You can't want to talk when your partner is distracted. You can't want to talk when your partner is already angry. You need to talk when your pastor can be receptive. So the, the guy or the girl comes back from work. You can see she just threw her shoes somewhere. She do that, this and this. And maybe the food is not prepared. He said, I want to talk to you about this, my food issue. Ah. When you can see her just lie on the chair like this. She haven't thrown her back. Just remove her wig, through somewhere. You can tell she's exhausted. You don't want to talk about. So the thing is that Timing can turn a good message to a bad message. Write that down somewhere. Timing is everything. Glory to God. Timing is everything. So you need to time it. What time should I be talking? There are times that it's convenient. There are times that it's tough. Look at Delilah. He made something, he made something calm down. I'm not even sure if he, if he gave him food. I think he gave him food. Though. I'm not sure. Gave him food. Massage. Romance. He even broke down. Now I know you don't like me. Now I know you don't like me. You will not tell me anything. You don't share your heart with me. Samson said, what do you want? See, she, did, she, did. she said unto him, how can you not tell how I love thee when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me three times. You have not even told me where in your strength lieth. Samson also, baby boy. Somebody don't know how to talk. Did you read about this woman in the Bible? Abigail, the name of the husband. What's the name of the husband? Laban. Abigail did not even know what Laban has done. He said, he said, he said, David, I know my husband cannot talk. He said, David, I know my husband. Abigail knew that her husband can talk. And so many people are here. Your father couldn't talk. You've copied it. Your mom couldn't talk. You've copied it. You've copied bad talk from your dad. From your dad. Blunt, resolve, 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 blade talk from your mom. Like my mom, 
my mom can uh, yeah. my mom can yak anybody say look at this one tinko tinko <laughs> you wonder what is tinko tinko my mom can use you know just the way she was brought up my mom would just play and swear for you like that one day i told her i said mommy hope you know that curses are powerful he said mm. he said curses of a mother are not saying they're just statements they say they're just expressions and it doesn't you about what like that i hope you know that yeah, there's a there's a you might want like that. But if you don't care if you pick it up, praise God. So so the thing is, watch the timing. Watch the timing. What then watch the tone? Watch the tone and body language. Some ladies, some ladies, when they talk that ladies, this pertains to you know, tone, body language. <laughs> The eyes will be rolling, 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 rolling. And I say, you say, you are being rude. How am I being rude? What did I say? You were talking, I just kept quiet. You only kept quiet verbally. You were talking non-verbally. And most communic- 70% of communication is what? Non-verbal. As he's talking, your eyes will be rolling. <laughs> <laughs> then another thing you can do is that you repeat what he says. So you came late. Came late. Or you put exclamation, uh oh. Uh oh. Really? Really? For real? Wow. Wow. You are joking. Are you serious? And someone said, I'm complaining to you this way. And all you are saying is all those words. You are just aggravating the temper. Praise God. When talking does not work, talk to the one that can talk to him. And don't behave as if... Let me tell you something. All of us have this stubbornness. When talking does no one, talk to the one that can talk to him or talk to her. And that's why you should not marry a man that nobody can talk to. You should not marry a woman that nobody can talk to. Because a time is going to come when talking will not work. And you can talk to him that can talk to him or her. Sometimes that person will be a mentor. But the major person that person will be is God. You know, and you know, there's nothing when God talks to his partner, you are just there's nothing because you can't tell God, oh, God, do you know what my wife did? Do you know my because God does not argue, God just talks. God doesn't argue like hey, so what did she do? Ha, ah, she did it, did it. God just say, um, go and apologize. Ah, God, how can you say go and apologize? This guy do what she did. This is easy. God doesn't come back and say, He said, Once I've that spoken, twice have I heard that voice. The next voice you will hear is what? Go and apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know God's word comes with weight. You know what, what weight is? You will feel the pressure when God talks to you. Only God has that power. Praise God. Have you been blessed today? Yeah. Stand on your feet, let's pray. <laughs> Stand on your feet, let's pray. Lift up your hands and ask Him for grace to do everything you've heard today. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Ask Him for grace to do everything. If you're single, if you're married, ask Him for grace. If you're a single parent, ask Him for grace to do all of these things you've heard today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Mangali, Prota, Menanga. All of in the gallery, stand on your feet. I want you to pray together. Oh, glory to God. Libraso, Kapali, Gabrande, Kapros, Kavele, Brati, Mancom, Redis. Hora, Bakens, Kopregedum, Rasam, Rodi. Lebro, Kaporo, Sivra, Kapali, Shevali, Bata. Lord, we receive grace to do all of these things. Oh, we receive grace, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, we thank you for your word. I pray for everyone here that you'll receive grace to do everything we've heard to make the right adjustments in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ 
your mind will be beautiful you will not make marital errors you will not mind the wrong person in the name of the lord jesus christ where there has been marital challenges either you're online or you're on site let there be peace let there be peace let there be peace in the name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus name we pray amen, amen. praise the lord amen. god bless you can have your seat god bless you, you can have your seat glory to god god bless you can have your seat such a powerful time if this message blessed you go online send me go on twitter tweet it hashtag pb speaks go on facebook on youtube send me a message on instagram i want to repost your tweet i want to repost those things i did some tweet about relationships go ahead like it put some comments into it and let it bless you